G'day everyone. So we've left uh, King Ash Bay this morning and we're heading down to Mount Isa. Uh, but that's about just under a thousand k's away so that's our plan to head there but not today. So we're just on the Tablelands Highway at the moment. Just this single lane buddy shit road that they call the highway. Um, yeah, so we pick up our part for the boat motor in Mount Isa. That's why we're heading there. And so we're going to probably find a free camp once we get onto the Barkley Highway, which is at the end of this. And camp for the night and then head into Mount Isa tomorrow. This road is what it is. Gotta concentrate. <laughs> See ya. Here we go, we're crossing over into the Queensland border. So we're going into Queensland. Whoop, whoop. They've got two bins there. They've got two bins, so you can put your, um, your stuff you're not supposed to take in. There's no checks, no controls. Just WA is the uh, probably one of the worst borders. So what about what we heard those people say? Uh, what did they say? They spent from August to August in WA. Yep. And then from August the 1st to the 20th in Northern Territory. <laughs> well, there you go. So a year in WA, 20 days in the Northern Territory. And they head back to Queensland. Yeah, they're off to Queensland, yeah. Whoop, whoop. All right, so we're in Queensland. Yeah. We've come to Mount Isa Underground Hospital Museum, uh, where we get, it's very fascinating. We're uh, going to have a look at the uh, hospital, I'll turn the camera around, above ground hospital here. And then uh, this here is the Fairbrothers, uh, what they call tent house. And this one has been relocated here to be part of the museum. And um, this one was lived in until 1979, I believe. Uh, an old lady passed away then, and, and it was then moved here to preserve it for history. But yeah, so we're going to do this little tour, uh, being on the underground mine, or underground hospital, and see how that goes. That's our day, or part of. So there you go, that was the uh, Mount Isa Underground Hospital Museum. Uh, very fascinating, the hospital could handle about a hundred patients underground comfortably. Uh, it was built because there was fear of, when in 1942 it was built, of fear of the Japanese invading Australia and uh, Mount Isa was, uh, they thought at the time would be able for the Japanese bombers to come and bomb Mount Isa. So they built the underground hospital to shift patients into should there be an air raid. Uh, and 
point of a fortune, I should say, there was no air raid or no bombing of Mount Isa, so the hospital actually itself never got used. Um, they did do practice runs from shifting patients from the hospital above ground to underground during mock air raid. So, yeah, very fascinating, uh, well presented. Uh, the young girl who, who did the tour with us was very knowledgeable. And yeah, and the thing was lost. It got lost um, in history for a long, long time. And then uh, some children found an air shaft to it and went down inside, thinking they discovered some fantastic things they had. Best copy I've ever. The only way it got discovered, these kids lit a fire down there, and the smoke coming out alerted a neighbour who then found it. And then the historical society got hold of it and we dug it out and finished it to make it to this town. Very fascinating, I love it. Anyhow, we're off to go somewhere else now. So here we are, this is Lake Mundara. It's um, yeah, a massive, massive lake. And we've, we've driven from the other side over there to this side. Getting around it a bit. Yeah, you can launch a boat here, this is the boat ramp area. Um, this has barramundi in here. It's been stocked with barramundi to encourage fishermen to come and fish here. Uh, yeah, beautiful little spot. Um, it's supposed to be a camping and picnic area somewhere, so we're going to go see if we can find that and then have a look around there. But yeah, this is an awesome little spot. Alright, Lake Mundara. So here we are, this is a barbecue picnic area. Got some tables over there, some barbecues. Another boat ramp. More barbecues up that way and more of the lake. On the down of the boat ramp. See what's going on down here. There were some little fish up at the other one. They do say there's freshwater crocodiles that happen, inhabit this area. Um, yeah, you can see some little fish in the water there. Just swim around at the boat ramp. Just not sure if you can see those. Here we are, we've turned up at the Mount Isa lookout. So uh, you can come up here and you can look out over the town. It's pretty big. I didn't realise the whole town is basically surrounded by hills. It's like a basin in there. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And we've got the water tank here too, which has been very colourfully painted with murals. Check out the fish. What? This is really cool. Well, this is looking south from the lookout. In the background over here, you've got the power station. There's one there, and there's one there. there somewhere there, yeah, there. The first one is called Micah Creek Power Station, and the second one is Di Diamantina Power Station. And then you've got the hospital, which is over there. That round building in front used to be the underground um, tourist mall where you could go down and have a look, and they've closed that one down and they've opened the Hard Times Mall, which is now the new underground one, which is this one here. So they do two or four tours a day through there. Over there's the mine. It's been a hundred years this year. They got the big hundred up. Yeah, how cool is that? And up here, got the signposts of all the cities, and uh, Perth is over 2,000 kilometres away. Was it 2,659 k's? Wow. Melbourne, 2,008 kilometres.
Sydney, 1860. We're closer to Hobart than we are Perth. Wow, that's crazy. All right. this morning we've had the uh, windscreen replaced thank you Allianz Insurance no cost to me uh, we've got the boat motor fixed it's running now Woo and we're heading off to a place called Corella Dam or Clem Walden or Clem Walton Dam is the other name for it it's a, um, about 60 k's out of Mount Isa so we're not traveling very far today and our mission there is to see if we can uh, catch some red claw. Apparently there's plenty of red claw there. So we've got some nets and uh, bait and we're heading off there to catch some of them. So that's our plan. We'll see you when we go there. So we've come into Corella Dam, which is not here, it's back further. We set up our camp there and then we've come for a bit of a drive. And we've also, uh, as you drive around, you come to another place called Clem Walton Park which is um, just back behind me but we've kept driving we're looking for wood and you wouldn't believe how hard it is to find wood in a forest because um, we just can't find any and we come across this beautiful little spot right here how cool is this fish galore in there it is fish galore they're like only little but yeah there's a swing from the trees you're so inclined, not me. Someone tried to make a jetty. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a jetty. You can swim here, but um, when you look in the water, there's lots of snags and trees and branches and stuff. So I, I don't know whether I would want to go jumping off that swing into the water. Yes, but beautiful nonetheless. Oh, the places you go to try and find some wood, eh? This track is just goes on forever and ever. We managed to get a little bit of wood, but this, it's not like the Northern Territory. In Northern Territory, everywhere you look, there's just dead trees and wood, so you can just pick it up on the side of the road. But out here, which I found interesting since it's Queensland bush, there's not many dead trees, but I guess they don't burn the land out here like they do in Northern Territory. Oh, look, kangaroo. Oh, just sitting there. That's what I'm supposed to say. Yeah. Oh, it's a proper kangaroo too. Let me just oh, get the camera off. Check this out. Ah, oh, yeah, skip. What's going on? You've got those white spots on, don't you? Yeah, you've got your mate there in the grass as well, hiding. I see him. Have a, have a good day. There you are. Good morning everyone. So this here is Corella Dam. It's a massive lake system. Uh, it's got a big dam wall on it up the other end. So we will go and have a look at that when we get the boat in. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful little spot. So we're going to spend a bit of time here, hopefully catching some red claw. But it goes for ages all out there. There's peninsulas in and out. It's just a massive lake. It's wicked. Anyway, Lorraine's got the uh, bacon going on. He's got to love a good cooked breakfast. Look at this. Whoop, whoop. Nice. All right, we're going to get the boat off later on, and we'll probably go for a spin around the lake. How cool is that? So here we go, we've put some nets out last night, we had a bit of a challenge. 
So I used dog biscuits and Lorraine used sweet potato. Apparently you can use sweet potato, cantaloupe and dog biscuits and apparently the red claw like all of it. So we did it, we put them both out in the same spot. Oh, Lorraine, no, Lorraine got zero in hers <laughs> and I got about seven. <laughs> Two, three, yep, four, seven. five, six, seven of them. Looks there like they are. Look at the size of them. one of them's big enough. To nah, there's more than one big enough one in there. Trust me. All right, so there you go. We did well. Hey, hey. So this is uh, Mary Kathleen Town. It's an abandoned town. Uh, it was established in 1954-ish and ended in 1982. And around, you've just got... All the, all the houses were auctioned off and taken away. Some are now in Mount Isa and in Cloncurry. And all that's left is all the building slabs that these houses and stuff were on. Uh, yeah, and it's now been set up so you can free camp here. So you just come on free camp. And what people do is they come in and they camp up next to a slab and they can use the slab. And uh, yeah, just set up your uh, camping. Things like this heart-shaped buddy fountain that someone's put a fire in the middle of. This is a park, apparently. Yeah, they, it looks like they've already started to. <laughs> this was a uranium mine apparently out here, so that's what made the town, brought the town to life. And when the uranium mine closed down, everything was auctioned off. Yeah. Yeah, and you're allowed to come and just camp up on the... On the slabs. Slab. <laughs> how cool is this joint? Privately owned. Ah, excellent. And how the cows just run through here. It's on a farm, it's privately owned, it's on a farm property now. But well, he allows you to camp here. Yeah, cool spot. Okay, so today we're heading out to Mary Kathleen Mine Site. It's an old uranium mine. Uh, so we're just going to go out and have a look around there. We had a bit of a look at the town that used to be here when the mine was running. Once the mine closed, the town ceased and they sold everything. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go have a look at that. So we'll see you when we get there. So the road into the mine is a bit ordinary. It starts off as bitumen but it's just so many potholes in it all over the place. It's very slow going. Then it turns into a dirt track like this. Has also got some obstacles in it. So we'll see what it's like when we get there. Hopefully it's worth it. Ah, we'll see you there. So there we go, you can see the open face of the where they've been mining. The wall there. Oh, it's a bit up and down this road. Just about at the top here, so we get to see what's going on. A few people here. Alright, we'll find a parking spot and we'll go and have a look. So here's the mine. Down here is the drive that went in. There's an open pit mine. Now, Yeah, so there you go. This is the mine site. Wow. Just dig a big hole in the ground and leave it there. It's just so peaceful here. It really is pretty. I say it's contaminated, obviously, with um, uranium mining, probably has radiation, I would say. Hence why obviously they don't use it. 
because that would make a nice lake too, wouldn't it? Wow. All right, we're going to go find something else to do. We came, we've seen, we're leaving. Uh, we've just put our pots out over there. Got three little boys hanging out there. And there, and there, and there. And we're just coming now to go and see if we can find some crocodiles, like these fellas on the shore over here. These are all freshwater crocodiles, so they're not going to hurt anybody, unless you annoy them too much. One there, there's a pole tail over there, and his mouth open. His little mate in front of him, lying down very still. Another one just there. Another one up there. They're just lots and lots of them. There are some bigger ones around, so we're going to see if we can find a bigger one. Let's go see what we can do. Yeah, the size of these birds. Big bucket. Spot over here, when we came the other day there was about nine crocodiles there, so we'll go see if we can find that spot again, see how many are there. 